Uh, hi, this is uh, hi, this is Ozzy Bogan. This is uh, Country for Dummies. This is just a quick video, uh, not so much a review, but just a rundown of the uh, the Trek uh, gravel bike SL5 checkpoint um, and my experience with the bike over the last two years. Um, so this is this differs from a, a review in the fact that this is sort of just my experience. Um, and I think that's better than a review in the fact that I can give you my opinion and you can use that to judge whether or not you want to invest uh, money in it. So uh, first of all, I won't give you the, spec, the specs because that's pretty easy to find, but um, the rundown of it is it's a, it's a gravel bike. So it's basically they're marketed it as a mixture between a, a road bike and a, and a mountain bike, um, to put it basic. Um, so it's got a carbon frame um, and it's got limited armor. So just under here, it's got some armor just to protect the carbon frame just here. Now the positives, uh, there's a few positives. The quality of the bike, uh, as you would imagine, um, given the price, is very good. Now I've had the bike for two years now. I've ridden it, I've ridden it a hell of a lot. <laughs> These are the original tires um, and they I haven't had one flat keeping in mind that I've ridden it on all types of terrain, haven't had one flat on it at all, uh, which is quite impressive for a bike. Um, all the gears, all the cogs, um, the brakes, um, and all those things I haven't had to change. Uh, keeping in mind though that I, I clean it after every ride. Uh, I changed the chain once only for preventative measures. I could have kept the same chain. Um, so everything in the bike, um, uh, hasn't, hasn't faltered at all. Um, so that's one of the main positives of it is it's a very good quality bike. Um, now negatives, um, which I want to point out, um, for people who are looking to buy the bike, I think it's important. And this is two years of experience of having the bike, um, is that I feel that it hasn't, it, do, it, it doesn't, ride for the purpose in which it's advertised. I don't think it's fit for purpose for how it's advertised. And I'll explain why. Um, so you've got three types of terrain, or three general types of terrain that you can ride on. You've got just your normal sealed road, you've got dirt roads, um, and then you've got mountainous terrain. Now this bike is advertised for all three of those. Um, now I, first of all, for the mountainous terrain, I rode it probably two or three times the third time I rode it um, on some mountainous terrain, the, uh, this is the old frame as you can see here. So the old frame uh, got a crack in it, just here. Um, luckily I noticed it because I always check my bike after I finish a ride. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware or not, but a crack in a carbon frame means that you have to replace the entire frame. Uh, because if once you get a crack in the frame, um, it could uh, cause the entire bike to fail as you're going down a hill at speed and the whole bike can um, give way underneath you which and people have died from it in Australia there's cases where um, people just going at slow speeds in fact uh, the carbon because of a crack that wasn't noticed the frame just gave way underneath and, and they died so it's always important with these sort of bikes to check the frame regularly to make sure there's no um, cracks or abnormalities. So as a result of that, I had to get a new frame for the bike. Um, now, luckily, Trek came to the table because I'd only had it for I hadn't had it for long, and they they replaced it free. However, generally speaking, uh, you're looking at about three thousand dollars for a new frame. That's Australian dollars. Um, so my recommendation after having it for two years is I would not be riding it on mountainous terrain at all um, because it could cause a crack which could cause serious injury on, for you on the bike. Now the second type of road, dirt roads, um, I'd say that it's very suitable for dirt roads or light gravel dirt roads. However, the caveat for that is um, sort of more rough and bumpier dirt roads i would not recommend the bike for now the reason for that is the the absorption for the seat um 
it's advertised as having an absorption system. However, I rode this many times on a bumpy dirt road and I ended up with a bent coccyx, um, for which I've had to get treatment for. So since that time, I haven't ridden it on any bumpy dirt roads or any mountainous trains as a result of those two things. Um, and that's after getting a professional, um, I got a professional fit out. Um, I paid extra to get it professionally measured out um, for me. So, um, so for light dirt roads and sealed roads, I think it's a fantastic bike. Um, for bumpy dirt roads and mountainous terrain, I would not recommend it. So if you're looking to purchase it for those, for the sort of rougher roads, I, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, for light travel on dirt roads and sealed roads, it's a fantastic bike. It's great for going up hills. It's very light um, and it's very durable and it's very good quality. So uh, that's basically my rundown of the Trek Checkpoint SL5 after two years. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. Uh, click to subscribe. Have a good day.